Hey y'all, it's Taquisha from Our Freedom Song. I am on my way out to the garden. I have a ton of things to do today. I'm actually going to be going to the store and getting some things to prepare food for my family for a week. And I want to show you that you can absolutely feed a family of six for a week for a really great price. <laughs> In a way that everybody is still eating delicious food, everybody is full, everybody is satisfied, and your pockets are not empty. I will show you how it can be done. So it is the end of July. I want to go ahead real quick into the garden to show you how things are growing and dying <laughs> at this point in the season. We receive so many incredible cucumbers from this vine. I'm so happy about that. I did leave one here so that I can collect seeds from there. But it's totally, well, pretty much dead um, at this point, which is completely normal. Like I said, this mini white cucumber is definitely something that I want to plant again next spring because it was abundant. This trellis here is dying back as well, but it still has some green. It's hanging on to the okra plant behind it, which is so tall. It's thriving right now. The cucumber plant right beside it in our garden box here is hanging on. It still has lots of green, although it does have some leaves that are turning brown. It's still trying to produce cucumbers. On this side, we still have lots of green, but you can see we have brown, dying cucumber leaves. This produced so many cucumbers as well. I would say my first experience, my first year of having these trellises and planting cucumbers has been pretty tremendous. I can see that, ooh, there's a, some type of beetle of some sort and a bunch of gnats on this melon that obviously split open with all the rain. So that's no good and that one is no good as well which is really sad because i haven't got we have not received one melon and i thought it was going to be so many melons and so we have not received any melons yet i do see some tomatoes over here that look good and they look ready to be picked i also see this beauty right here which makes me happy because I did not know I was going to be able to have tomatoes this year because of how we started off. The squash bugs has finally graced us with their presence in the garden. We do have some tomatoes over here that can be picked and the girls picked quite a few yesterday. And look at this. Oh my goodness. We have our first okra i've literally never seen a okra in real life sprouting from a plant so that is pretty exciting and this okra flower and all its beauty that's very exciting even at this point in the in the gardening um, season, we still have some beautiful fruit. Our cucamelon, which is what we saw that squash bug on, is still green, but it's not producing anything. It's just so hot out here. And I don't believe any of these melons came to full maturity. I've left them because I was waiting for them. I am waiting for them to turn orange, but I don't know. I may have to pick one and just see what's in the inside. The tomatoes over here are pretty much all dead, which is okay. 
its life has come to an end still producing some um, some beautiful tomatoes which I will pick these look gorgeous so I'm excited about picking those I see another one over here another beauty that's not destroyed and here is the last of this beautiful variation here so beautiful this is what the garden is looking like right now it's time for us to get in here prune and pull up any dead plants and really just refresh this area coming into the second half of our succession season as well as thinking about fall and what is going to be planted in the place of the things that has died so where these tomatoes are i know is going to be a path that is going to lead right into our garden extension and so next year i will not have tomatoes here next year for the spring season there are some more tomatoes that are producing from this seemingly dead tomato plant so I would say overall, this has been such an incredible experience for, um, for us for this first spring season of planting so many things. And we've learned so much um, that it makes me want to do it again and again. And it's not something that um, we are going to give up on. We are going to continue to press forward and learn and grow as we go. And pretty soon I'll be helping someone else figure out how to start their very own garden did finally get some of these red grapes and i'm so happy that they finally produced after being attacked so often by aphids now i'm going to take you along with me to the store to show you how you could feed your family on a very tight budget it is incredibly hot outside today so i'm going to run in and make me a nice cold iced coffee before i hit the road We grabbed these beans from our local coffee roasters and there is something so special about having freshly roasted coffee beans. I mean, if you're gonna drink it, it might as well be the best, right? I'm actually going to be using these white chocolate style bacon chips from Lily's. So these are sweetened with stevia. I'm gonna use some Mexican vanilla blend as well as this um, pure. This is my go-to sweetener. While it's hot, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in there. I'm gonna add a little splash of vanilla and a little sprinkle of this pure, which is very sweet. I can honestly not say enough good things about this whisk. This whisk is so incredible. Let me tell you, you do not need a fancy coffee machine that foams up your milk. If you get one of these whisks that costs like $12, this will make you feel so fancy with your coffee. It foams it up so nicely. I highly recommend this. And I literally pay like $12 for this. And I know you're thinking like, I have a fancy coffee machine. Literally my husband just bought that for me for my birthday. Um, in May and so before that I did not and I had delicious coffee still I would use instant coffee I whipped up that instant coffee that was a really cool thing and I also use my whisk right here that just made me feel all nice about my fluffy coffee and so this one is by Zule I would definitely link it below but listen $12 the best $12 I ever spent Okay, so I am an almond milk drinker. So that is my weapon of choice. I think I'm ready to go. Some stick.
staples to look for whenever you are trying to be super frugal about food would be, from my experience, would be noodles, beans, and rice. Now, these three things will give your family the calories that they need. <laughs> Everybody will be full and you will not have to spend a lot of money creating these things. The challenge is using these items, using these foods and not allowing every meal to taste exactly the same. So using the same things in different ways where your family is not feeling as though they're just eating the same thing over and over again. So for those of you who don't know, we actually lived in our RV for two years. And that was quite the journey with figuring out how to, very similar to right now and not having a kitchen, just figuring out how to um, be creative with meals um, being in a tight space. I actually had more of a kitchen then than I do now. And so what I have now available to me is the Instapot as well as a griddle and a toaster. So that is all we have to make food. And we are going on seven or it's probably eight months now without a kitchen. And so just finding a way to still feed my family wholesome food and not be lazy and just eat pizza and fast food all the time because that's not good for us but figuring out how to feed my family whole food without having an oven and a stove and all the things just relying on the griddle as well as the instapot you know has been my challenge but it is definitely doable and then when you add in being on a tight budget it's definitely doable so we've eaten so many beans and so when we were in the trailer the kids especially summertime like they always knew there was always a, a pot of beans hot fresh and ready everybody always had something to eat the great thing about beans is that it's high in protein and it costs a little bit and it fills everybody up and it tastes delicious like growing up i never really had beans um but having four children and just, you know, just being good stewards of what we have and managing what we have, beans has been such a godsend, honestly. Knowing that my kids are getting enough calories is huge for me. Um, and so beans fit into that category. I'm gonna show you today how I'm going to take these staples, these three things, and make very different meals with it on a strict budget. So it's great whenever you are raising your own meat or you find meat on sale, um, but really to be as frugal as possible, meatless dishes is where it's at as far as like saving because meat really doesn't stretch a whole lot um, unless you are like whole pieces of meat. So um, using ground meat, that's a really great thing because it spreads throughout the whole dish or you know putting you know some chicken thighs in there to you know just go throughout the dish and so I do I would like to have meat if I can find it um, for at least two dishes um, but I want to make sure that I am you know using the money wisely and getting what's going to fit nicely into this budget because I really want it to be as low as possible and I want to show you that it can I be actually done. love to cook I love being a homemaker and being that in my home and so not having a kitchen has been hard because I want to you know be in there and I want to be making things from scratch and baking and cooking my family these you know beautiful meals because it's hard to make super beautiful meals in an instapot um, but it can be done but I'm just saying um, I, I have a lot more uh, creativity available to me whenever I have a I have a I have more room to make things really beautiful whenever I, I can use an actual kitchen um, and so I cannot wait y'all until our kitchen is ready so we are literally doing all the things ourselves um, extremely budget conscious so we just have to go with it we started wood was a certain price it's since then um, you know 
raised in price and so I mean we can't really do anything about that and so we just kind of got to roll with the punches but while we are rolling we're gonna see what we can make work <laughs> So when you are trying to be frugal about what you are buying, definitely going for the dry beans is going to be substantially different than going for the canned beans. Although the canned beans are so convenient, if you are trying to save money, taking the time to soak those beans and um, cook them from scratch is going to save you the most amount of money. section and this is where we can really have the feel that we're changing things up even though I was in my 20s noodles. whenever I learned that this is the best way to figure out what the best price is instead of looking at this number and trying to do the math all you have to do is see how much it says it is per ounce great example of these elbow noodles you can see for this small box you're gonna pay 5.8 cents per ounce but if you get this larger box you're going to pay five cents per ounce definitely look at it because you would think it's always the case that you're going to save money if you get the bigger box but i've actually saw where that is not the case sometimes you actually end up paying more for a bulk item which is so strange and so weird and if you aren't paying attention you will be thrown completely for a loop but trust me it happens Finding a spice that's already ready is a good way, a quick way to get flavor into food. But you have to be careful with these things. But there are some brands that actually have pretty decent um, ingredients and they don't contain sugar. I know this Fire and Smoke brand is like that as well as Kinder's. But don't be fooled by this brand because some of them have sugar and some of them don't. This is the only one I think in the brand that I found that doesn't contain sugar. So if you have $1.38 in your budget to use for some seasoning packets, definitely go with one that you um, will be happy about using. Going with seasoning packets because I'm on a strict budget. I'm just going straight to the seasonings and spices. I already have the spices that I need to use at home for the most part. Right now, I think the only thing I'm missing is some garlic powder and maybe some onion powder and these are 98 cents here and so I'll go with that example of when the store brand which you assume is going to be the cheapest um, product is actually not cheaper because I looked at how much the unit price is I can see that it's actually cheaper for me to get the brand name version
tuna. Sometimes if you, depending on what section you look in, you can find what you need for a better price. So this brand is the same price. They only had one of these. And so, well actually it's not this brand, it's this brand in the back, Goya. It's the same price, but I'm going to go with one of these and one of those because I really enjoy having that pop lid. To my surprise, this has pop lid as well. So I will go with this brand actually. I go for the jar um, pasta sauces I prefer to get the organic one as you can see it's not really that big of a difference just to get the organic one So I literally just checked out, walked outside. Are y'all ready for this grand total? Listen, these things are going to feed a family of six for seven days, one whole week, dinner as well as lunch. And let me show you what the total is. Here it is. Everything that I put inside that cart and showed you came up to with tax $63.40. $63.40? Are you kidding me? Like, that is fantastic. I'm so excited about this, y'all. Listen, not only do I want to show you what you can make for a family of six and how much you can spend. But I wanna take you step by step so that you can see how I create these dishes without a kitchen, using only an Instapot. Um, I wanna show you how it can be done. And so because this video is this long, I want to do a separate video so that I have enough time to show you how to make all seven of these meals and how we can prepare them and have them ready to go for a quick and easy dinner and so i am going to do that stay tuned for the next video where i show you step by step how i make these dishes how they turn out how delicious they are and how they look and how it can be done on a very tight budget you can have delicious food you could have food that you make at home that aren't extra processed listen we can do this in this day and age where things are so expensive they're going through the roof it's hard we're trying to figure out how we're going to feed our family how we're going to maintain listen we can do this we can do this we can figure this out there is a way and i'm going to show you so definitely stay tuned to this next video i cannot wait for you to see these meals